Yeah, you got a meeting with your tutors? And another studio? Wow. Cool, man. So how are you liking your process with, uh, with the team and all that? All right, so... Oh, I forgot to do my introduction to this one. Um, what's up? <laughs> I guess there's no introduction to this video other than I'm um, working on this new boss arena type thing. Fails in. What's up, man? Okay, so, howdy, man. Howdy, do. I'm working on something you'll probably like to see here. This is um, this is the new boss arena. So it's in the same. It's in this place where um, on the top of the overworld in every world, there's this one cave where there's always supposed to have been something coming. That's what this is. This is a cave where you fight the new boss and stuff. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done a live stream. I've kind of had some life issues I'm working through. You had some growing pains? Yeah, a couple things about your game. It's coming along better. Good to hear. Nice. For, um... Okay, so where are we at here? Oh yeah, this is... Shoot, this is running super slow. Oh, because of game show. Yeah, game shows. Oh, man. So I just restarted the stream to try and get rid of this problem, but it didn't work. So I guess I'm going to have to do a super slow stream. Like when game show eats up to over 100% of CPU, it basically makes it so I can't play Songbringer at more than like six frames a second. It takes like a minute or two to compile like one file. But this will be kind of a slow stream. This is all we're going to get out of game show today. I'm just going to close this and ignore how slowly it's running. Oh cool, you're moving on to doing in-game UI. Nice. Good good stuff, man. Yeah, C plus C sharp and Unity are awesome skills. You've been learning D? Sweet, dude. I know, man, it makes everything really painful. But I just restarted the stream. I'm not gonna restart the stream again. So we're just I'm just gonna live with it. Maybe this will just be a chat stream only. <laughs> I'll chat and barely do work, basically. You running out of shortcuts for the things? Oh. Yeah, you need to do some UI. Right, you, have, you ran out of shortcuts. You're like, we used all the shortcuts. We, all The whole keyboard is gone. Yeah, I've heard good things about D too. So what? It, what's like your favorite part about D so far? You like that it's a cross between C++ and Java, but like what else? Is it is D memory managed? My uh, CPU is running so hot here right now that um, my computer fans on, so you might be hearing that. In addition to my voice, oh, it's optional. Okay, now well, that's at least it's optional. That's cool. Oh, and you can you can switch it on and off at runtime. That's cool. What about okay? So, what's your favorite feature? about it so far while we're doing that I'll start some work I guess code in support for multiple keyboards <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What's up, Sergeant Sam? Welcome. Oh, it's oh, you can turn the collection on or off per section of code. Wow. Huh. <laughs> Filling up the keyboard. Ah, oh, yeah, right. All oh, right, that's kind of cool. You can like start off by not having to worry about memory management for a little while. Like you just want to like hack something together or test out something, prototype it quickly rapid development, that kind of thing, and then later on, improve performance, make things better, clean up the code, and that kind of stuff. Oh. I guess I might as well show, show the arena so far. Oh, and that's your favorite thing. That and being able to code like a Java developer but compiling your native code. Oh, that's sweet. Huh. Oh, yeah. I get you. I'm starting to, I'm starting to see why it's like a cross between C++ and Java. Oops. Wait, we want that. So I'm trying to reset the whole state of this arena, which means I gotta not have the parry ability. Um, the doors, oh, I should kill the doors. Kill those. Um, I think that's enough to trigger all the events and everything. Oh, no, there's two um, story events. Um, I think it's zero ship. Yeah. Get rid of those. I think this save file is in a state where it could do this now. Do this arena thing. Oh no. So it's poorly supported, huh? Oh, it's just a small community. Oh, not a lot of example code. Not a lot of open source projects. Ah. Okay. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, so you'll be able to play all the changes so far in the beta version. There is, all right, so already in the beta version, there's so many, all the new items are done pretty well. The Ring of Difficulty still has some work to do. But the charge is in there, the parry ability is in there, um, the ferret drones are in there, which help you find 100% items. Um, yeah, the ring of difficulty is kind of cool, because you get a better score, but it just makes everything super hard. So it's like the ultimate challenge. Oh, that's cool. So you can kind of use a lot of your the C++ code you already have with the... Okay, so you can copy that, yeah. All right, let's run this. probably going to get like six frames per second or something crazy low because of the streaming software doing its quick it's weird glitch
So yeah, this is the cave in the overworld of Songbringer that many of you have found before where um, Zero appears right here and he's walking into the cave. I think he'll appear if we walk on screen. Yeah, this is where Zero appears and he walks into the cave. If you walk into this cave, um, in the current beta version of Songbringer or in the major update that's coming in, in a little while once this is all finished, you come in here and basically you can you trigger these two story events. Oh, we have, do we have sound day? Oh. You guys have sound on the game? I know, yeah, it was confusing because there was nothing really to it before. Sounds working? Nice. Okay, and it should still be working even though I just plugged in sound over here. Okay, so yeah, you trigger these two story events. And in this beta version, the what happens is the wall blows up once you trigger the that. Nice, good, good, good. And then you can go further and you meet Ren. So this is your uh, this is one of your scouts from your team aboard Songbringer. There's Ren, Keel, um, and Smalls. And so this is Ren. He's the dude with the horns. So basically Ren is like this dude that is studying with Zero. So basically, you get to study with with Ren as kind of like an extension of studying with Zero as well. It's sort of like you're training up your abilities in this cave by fighting him. But but so basically, you get into this place where you you have to fight a whole bunch of waves of enemies. After this, you meet Ren there in this room, and in this room, spoiler alert, this is uh, this requires some advanced items to get through here. There's a lot of options. Um, if you have top hat bombs, you can throw a bomb at it. Um, if you have the ghost sword the go and you're powered up on your health, you can open it that way. Um, you can also, if you have the hyper top hat, you can throw your hyper top hat to open that. So basically you have to have some kind of advanced items to get into this room here. And this, this room is where the floor changes between waves. So I'm fighting a, an initial wave of enemies here and then the floor will change and I'll fight some more kinds of enemies and the floor will change again and again. And basically after fighting waves of enemies you finally get to fight this new boss which is Ren. You get to fight Ren and he's like got some new abilities. There's some weird Z issues here I got to work with. Heck happened here. Oh, there's one guy down here. Okay. So this is where the floor changes. I gotta work on this because you can get trapped. But I got an idea how to fix that. But like, see how the floor changes? You can fight different kind of waves of enemies. And there's gonna be all new types of enemies. So that was uh that was a new enemy there called the Drop Three, which is basically like kind of like a Kind of like the drop boss, but smaller. It's kind of like a medium level mini boss type enemy. I'm just cheating to stay alive here. Yeah, this is kind of a fun room. This is really fun to develop with all this, this changing floor stuff going and new enemies and stuff like that. Whoops, press the wrong buttons here. So yeah, um, the first thing I want to work on today 
is to create some new enemies to go in this new type of arena thing. Um, one of them will be a smarter viper, or a viper that sort of teases you more, not exactly just brute forces. And then also I want to do some kind of like flaming dragon, so a dragon that leaves behind some flames or something. And what else? Maybe play around with the concept of taking other bosses and turning them into sort of medium level mini boss type enemies. Okay, so with that all, that concept laid out, let's do this. Whoops. Oh. That was weird. Chrome just disappeared for a second. Oh, let me this. Alright, so we want to go to like data foes. Let's copy the Viper to let's call it the Viper 2. And let's Um, I'm going to copy the boss. Um, let's take Purio. Whoops, it's not Purio, it's the Fire Boss. Copy Fire Boss to Foes. Um, let's do like a, a Dragon. We already got Dragon Ice, so let's do Dragon Fire. One last one, let's do the Blob Boss. To, um, this is like a, a Blob that can, it's like a Blob 3, I think we already have Blob 3. This will be Blob 4, I guess. And... The Blob Boss Small will copy to... Lob four small. Okay, so we've started by basically just copying some existing AI over to just some new documents. And then we'll start with maybe not blob four, but Viper two would be easy. Pretty easy one. Well, Viper 2, you're adding things. She might be easier to do the dragon fire. You guys still there? Okay, so we'll start with a new wave. Nice. Oh, cool. I thought the stream messed up again or something. Okay, so we need... Start with the dragon fire, just one of them. So right away when we go to this arena, We'll be already fighting this enemy. So we'll go to Dragon Fire. And this is going to be exactly like Puriel. So let's start changing the data so it's not. Has a render component, reflection component. 
shadow, input, health. No explosions. Uh, wait. Is this a dragon fire? It might be cool if you did have an explosion size, but it was 1-1. One, one. And kind of like the drop 3. The drop 3 has this one with a health flag. What's that? Oh, explosion items, none. So when he explodes, there's no items that come out, just like a regular enemy. Can be hit by anything. Oh, let's steal some artwork from the Viper, actually. Let's steal the Viper's art. Um, also, doesn't need to do the boss roar event or timer boss. You just do Something like that, where it's just he just has an initial, it goes straight into his mode zero. So he's got yeah, stuck. Shoot, he shoots fireball. We don't want him to. We don't want him to shoot. So turn off that stuff. Basically, it's just like a viper that leaves behind a trail of fire. Oh, he launches a fire trail. That's a cool one. And he's got a fireball. That's cool. You know, he's also spawned spiders. We don't want to do that. Yeah, he leaves fire only. Okay, that looks good. Rocket Bunny! What's up? High five! High five, my brother! How you doing? How's life? See what this guy does. This guy even work? What's great about working on AI actually is that I don't have to recompile any C++ files, which in the current state of my CPU being so taxed by this game show glitch, it's easier to work on AI. You good? You got a girlfriend? Wow, dude. You got a girlfriend? I lost mine. That's basically my story lately. Good for you, buddy. How is it? How is she? What's it like? Yo, Dead Beef. What's up, man? Yeah, really. Really. Oh, this would be way better. Okay, let's change the... I'm going to change the floor of this arena. Yeah. Oh, no, that's cool. It's cool. Life changes. Life changes. You go through these changes. i I got to admit, I've been crazy emotional lately, the last few months, but... Um, things are looking up. Things are looking up. I got uh, kind of like simplifying life, you know. I'm excited for new growth. I'm excited to just, you know, continue making games. Really, what's what's going well in life right now is video games. 
So I'm excited to keep making video games. That's really, you know, it's like such a really cool creative outlet to, um, I don't know, to be incorporate music and digital art and programming. These, these amazing art forms, I love it. Oh, right, I'm gonna change the floor. Besides, how the heck is he walking on the sky? How are you doing that, dude? Oh, he might be bigger than he needs to be, actually. What's this collision size? Oh, yeah, see, he's too big for these. He needs to be 18 max. Now he shouldn't be able to just walk across the sky anymore. Yeah, so life's changing for me, you guys. Life's changing a lot, which means that I don't know what I don't know if I'm going to be able to stream for a little while. I'm actually going to have to be working from co-working spots and things like that. I'll at least be able to do YouTube videos, guaranteed. I can continue doing those no matter what. But the question is, will I be able to stream? I don't know what kind of internet connections I will have in future months and stuff like that. But I can guarantee that I will do as many streams as I can when I find good internet and things like that. He can still go across the sky. Why is that? Start on the sky. Is he moving too fast? Oh no, he can diagonally go across the sky somehow. Well. I wanted to change the floor anyway. I think that might have something to do with it. Uh, it's called set set um, wave. Set ground for wave. All right. Let's comment this little pattern. We'll start with just uh, X, Z, Y, D. Yeah, yeah. We want X D to be less than or equal to something. I'm, I'm going to create a rectangle of sky blocks where you'll fight this first wave. And so I'm thinking about five, five blocks each direction. Probably should do it. So basically just create a little rectangle there in the middle of place where you can fight this guy. And then hopefully he can't walk on the sky anymore. Even 18 technically shouldn't be able to walk on the sky, no matter how cool he is. Yeah, here, here's where we're doing like a one minute recompile for one file or something crazy. Because I have the 200% CPU, man. 200C. I bet you it's at 200% right now. It's at least 179. It's 175. Two twenty one. How can you use 200%? 221% of CPU. I was, I was already starting to think that 101 was too much. You gotten addicted to Red Bull? No. You know what? You've got that... You, you used, it used to be chocolate milk for you, man. It used to be chocolate milk. 
Now it's Red Bull. <laughs> I hope you don't drink Red Bulls before bed. Okay, just don't drink them before bed, man. At least, at least drink them during the day, so you got, you got, you know, you can use the energy and stuff, right? What do we got here? Yeah. Okay, so it did take 73 seconds to recompile that one file. That normally takes about three seconds. You remember the chocolate milk? You forgot about the chocolate milk. How could you forget? Oh, I forgot the little. Hey, can still walk on the sky. What are you doing, dude? Maybe does he does he actually have the ability to walk on the sky? Maybe that's what it is. Move mask. Oh, what? Oh, because he was based on Puriel, of course. Yeah, he should have sky here. Static container switch sky. What else? What else, man? You should use. You drank five cans and shaved a minute off your mile time? Uh, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. First of all, I'm proud of you for actually drinking five cans of Red Bull in a row. That's like you could maybe win some contests just doing that. Right, yeah, it's 100% per core. That's why it's like, that's why it can get up to 200%. But I don't see how it could ever get above 200%. So that's where the math just starts breaking down for me. I'm pretty sure we broke through the singularity and the universe is about to implode or explode not quite sure that's not something to be proud of everyone thought you were crazy because you because you are yeah so congrats also on shaving a mile off your saving a minute off your mile time are you running track right now, or is this just like PE class? All right, we need to recompile again, because we need... If XD is equal to zero and y is less than h2 then we're also going to turn on the top what is it not turn on i think it's turned on toggled another 73 seconds will elapse you don't do caffeine too well i don't really either you need, you crash, I crash too from caffeine. I crash rather quickly. Yeah. Oh, it's just PE? Oh, okay, it's just PE. You need caffeine to function? Oh, you got chronic fatigue syndrome? Damn. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, none after dark. That's great. Still compiling. We're linking now. Okay, we're linking. What do you think this one's going to be? 72. I'm going to see 72. Oh, 59. Woo! This is a quick... That was a quick recompile right there. Having both cores... Grinding away at something. Who knows what they're grinding away on. This is the glitch that kills me sometimes. Kills the stream, man. Your, your vision sharpens? Really? Oh, I did the wrong move. It's supposed to be not toggled. 
Oh, another 60 seconds shall elapse. Toggle equals false. It's really backwards. But did it give you wings? <laughs> No, I don't think that's just an Australian thing. It's here, too. In the United States. Rocket Bunny, what about what about back in Europe when you're when you're um, back in Holland? Did they did they say that Red Bull will give you wings? Did you know that already? <laughs> Until you got a Red Bull hangover. <laughs> I can imagine you had a horrible one. Drinking five of them in a row, but at least you got your some of your energy out. Yeah, it totally is. Who knows? I'm still compiling. It's still leaking. Uh, this, you know what? I gotta be thankful. I gotta be thankful for these slow compile times. It's nice to just chat mostly. Oh my god! I know. Those do. Ah, oh, I did that one time where I did caf I had caffeine withdrawal. Like I had been drinking. This was like six years ago or something. I'd been drinking espresso a lot. Like we're talking like I would get like shots or you know I would get espresso drinks that had the equivalent of like three to five espresso shots in them, and then like go to work and stuff. And that caffeine withdrawal sucked. But afterwards, I had way more consistent energy than I did, than I ever did from drinking caffeine, right? Like I had just like, my energy was higher, I think a little higher overall, and it was just way more even and steady. Okay, right, we got some, yeah, this guy cannot walk on the sky anymore. He leaves this trail of fire. Let's make him a little more, Oh, he's, yeah, he's way less, way less gnarly to fight than a, than a regular Viper. Oh, did he not get knocked off into the sky? Yeah, that's been happening a lot. Ah, the floor is changing! Oh, damn, yeah. <laughs> it's all you. Oh, man. When I was in, um, when I went to college or university or whatever, it was an institute. I went to the Oregon Institute of Technology for a couple years. I never graduated. But anyways, um, I had a pile of a pile of Mountain Dew cans right behind my my monitor. So I had my own custom built computer. This was 1998. Yeah, 1998. We're talking like about almost 20 years ago. I had one of those. This was back in the time where we didn't have LCD screens yet. We had we still had the huge monitors and I had purchased a 21 inch monitor at that time a 21 inch monitor was so big and it was just huge and it had this great refresh rate so it, but it was giant man it was like a giant thing this 21 inch monitor and behind all of that was cans and cans of mountain dew just empty cans of mountain dew piles of it you could reduce the side effects with the supplement called l-theanine Really? And it's naturally found in green tea. It's associated with the sort of energy that monks have. Whoa. That's cool. Um, I've also heard that if you mix green tea with other types of antioxidants, like 
um, holy basil, for example, like mix the green tea leaves with holy basil leaves, stuff like that. Then you also get the more more of the same kind of effects where you're reducing the side effects of caffeine. We all got our bad habits, right? Not only was my bad habit intaking so much caffeine and sugar, by the way, sugar is another whole topic. Um, not only that, but I was making a mess behind my monitor. Such a bad habit. Okay, well, that guy actually worked. Dragon Fire, and he's got the Viper's artwork for now. I guess he could have its own artwork at some point, but to get started, that's pretty good, actually. Let's, start, let's do another enemy here. Yeah, right? Could be much worse. Much, much worse. That's right. All right, next enemy would be um, the Viper 2. You've gotten better at intaking tons of sugar. Oh no, you're going to explode. Don't eat so much sugar. You're going to explode. You used to, ha you used to hate candy, but now you like it? Cool, so I like this dragon fire, but let's do the Viper 2, which is going to look exactly the same as the dragon fire did, except that it won't be releasing fire and stuff. So I want this Viper 2 to be a little more friendly to fight. How many hit points? Whoa, this guy has way too many hit points. The Dragon Fire should maybe have 20 to 30. Actually, what does the... Oops. Yeah, you can never hate chocolate milk. No way. No one... No one hates chocolate milk, right? How could you? All right, the drop three has 20 to 30. Yeah, this is a good starting point for hit points. There's the Dragon Fire and Viper 2. Both of those have like 20 to 30. There's a lot of hit points. But we're going to make him a little friendlier with his attack. Oh, yeah. It has a weird aftertaste, huh? Milk? Mmm, yeah. Yeah, a lot of milk. I know what you mean. Can't deal either. So we want him to sometimes retreat. Like, sometimes he gets in a mood where he wants to run away for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Ah, yes. Okay, so he's got two choice. Let's make him do two so two choices here. Where he Sometimes we call this mode flee, or I mean sequence flee. If mode zero target any doesn't, yeah, I guess we need to have a target. If
target for far 40. If Rand is less than 0 0.5, then we're going to set Dur target and then Dur opposite. So we're just running away. And then setting a delay of at least one second. Let's see how that goes. So basically we want this guy to feel like a viper, except he can... Gosh, actually this guy's hit points might need to be lower. Just like feel like a viper, but he's like less, less intense. I'm going to add a little bit to this guy's AI there to try and get him to stay, to only flee when he's within a certain range. Thanks, man. Nice talking to you, too. Have a great night, brother. Still too chasey chasey. Yeah, I do have plans for future projects. Um, uh, at this point, they are sort of like ideas. I'm trying to come up with some ideas for the next game. Um, and I just want to, I don't know. I want to take some time to think about the design a little bit before I start. But I do have some ideas of what I would do with like a Songbringer 2 for example, or something like that. But I'm trying to keep my mind completely open with and when it comes to future projects because maybe a better idea will come along or maybe I'll be inspired to do something else soon. But for now, um, I'm definitely finishing Songbringer as strongly as possible. So I'm still working on this major update for Songbringer. And, um, and also the soundtrack. So the soundtrack will eventually come out as well. Um, it's just taking time to get that soundtrack finished because it's, it's totally different than the game soundtrack. You know, the game soundtrack is sort of dynamic and it changes and it's got these, 
effects applied to it at real and runtime, things like that. And then the soundtrack soundtrack is um, different. It's like a moment in time. It's like just it's all captured. It's not live. It's static. So that it takes a minute. Uh, maybe I'm just making more work out of it though. I don't know. But I do, I guess I do, I really have a high quality bar for everything I create. I want like my music to be really good. And so that's why I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on it. A lot of quality time on the music, but it's like the last priority. The first priority is the, the, the finishing this major update. <clears throat> You can never plan enough, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Especially at the beginning of a game project, when you haven't started it yet, you're in this really, really awesome creative potential state. You know, you can create anything, anything you want. What do you want to do? What do you want to create? And, you know, your goals change. Your goals change too, like at through life and things like that. And so sometimes you have different goals for games. With Songbringer, my goal was like, I don't know, it's just to see if to see if the universe would support my game creations. You know, do people want to play the games I have or I'm, I want to make? And I'm so humbled that people do want to play games like Songbringer. So that was a success, you know. That's not really all I wanted to do was to say, all right, can I, can I do this? Can I do this for a living? Can I make games for a living? Yeah, things change a lot, don't they? As you start to go through your plans. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't really see him flee enough. Oh, I guess because it's... It really just needs to be like that. And this could be... up to two seconds long, I guess. Let's see if he flees a little bit more now. Oh yeah, I was just talking about, um, you know, finishing the update for Songbringer. That's like priority number one, so yeah. And I'll be working on Songbringer through through part of next year at least, you know, like at least, I don't know, at least three or four months into next year, I'll still be working on Songbringer. But then after that, yes, I have ideas for the next game. I have, I have kind of a rough uh, idea, a rough draft of what Songbringer 2 would be like. Um, but I'm trying to keep my mind completely open in this state. Like, maybe maybe I want to create some kind of side game, side project-y game where, like, it's a, maybe another game in the Songbringer universe or something like that, but it's just something else. You know, like, I want to keep my mind completely open in this state because... That's where um, I feel the, you know, the, the core, like, values of a game come through in your own, my own values. Like, what do I want to create? What do I prefer to play? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, you. Thank you for playing. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. 
is this is happening a lot where I'm getting knocked out into the sky. I know this guy can hit hard. I, I don't know how it's hitting out into the sky so much. So uh, I need to test if this guy can if this guy is fleeing or not. Keep forgetting to do that. Now I remember. Remember to watch the flea. It goes all the way around the wire in another dimension. Okay, he's running, bouncing, melee, bounce, melee, flea. Yeah. Melee, bounce, melee. Damn. Okay, we need to flee a little more. Okay, yeah, just a little more fleeing here. That's ran four, let's see, ran three. He hasn't done it once. He's bouncing. There he did it. Huh. Okay, what would make him bounce? Oh, because if he goes into mode one. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, this is mode. So he's got mode 10. I think it's where he unsheaths. And there's mode zero, which is normal. And mode one is after he melees. So this flea needs to not worry about mode at all. Actually, no, it should be with mode zero. Oop. Mode zero or if mode one. Gotta be specific about stuff. Because like mode 10, for example, it shouldn't do flea. Still not doing it. I guess maybe it's just... Still too much RAM? I'm editing the right enemy, am I not? Yeah.
almost want to program something into his AI where after two seconds of chasing me, he gives up and flees then. It's like he always, I want him to chase more consistently, a little more consistently. Every two or four seconds or something like that, I don't know. So, I keep on, keeps on seeing this melee and bounce. Let's animate melee. Attack. Not, not really melee. Not melee done. But I'm always seeing that bounce. If mode zero, if target any, if dir none, if path none, target far, not if invincible, got dir smart or dir target. Okay, that makes sense. Now, if. Are we using timer already? And we again, timer zero, timer is less than zero. Oh, he does do a timer after melee. So I could set a timer here, like... I almost think it should go into a mode two. Should really be called Chase. That's what he's doing. So yeah, I guess it's I guess you should go into mode two. So if we're not in mode two already, we want to go into mode two, but also set a timer of, we want to chase for say four to eight seconds randomly. What's up FLLR, what's up man? I'm glad you've seen some positive reviews. There's, there are, I'll guarantee there's both positive and negative reviews out there. How does it feel to hit big? I wouldn't say it's it's a big hit, but uh, it feels great for Songbringer to overall be a success. It definitely is. It's going to definitely at least get me to the next video game. So that's, 
it feels really great, to tell you the truth. Um, before I started it, about three years ago, I honestly wondered if anyone would want to play my video games. So the fact that people do want to play my video games and that they're willing to pay enough for me to make the next video game is pretty awesome. Um, one of my goals in life now is to just keep making video games, you know, until one of them is a real hit, like a real financial hit, I mean. And then I can actually, like, maybe start a studio. Like, I'd like to hire people um, and make more games or just faster games. I don't know, something like that. Or deeper games, you know, with more people on my team, I could do, probably do more, right? I just think... <laughs> It's, you know, there's some advantages to being a solo developer. Uh, you know, making Songbringer was really, you know, like it really was efficient. It really shaved off so much um, stuff that you have to do. It's time you have to spend when you're in a team, right? You have to spend time in a team communicating, especially. And so with Songbringer, I didn't have to communicate much with my team because I was the only team member. So I just, I would do, you know, I would do an idea without having to communicate it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I did some games before Songbringer. The one uh, immediately before Songbringer I made is called Hero Bash. And I made it with my buddy. It was a MOBA for iOS, but I've been making games since 1995. Uh, back in DOS, actually, my first game was in DOS. I took a long, large, I mean, yeah, a long break. I took about 10 years off and didn't program for the for much of the 2000s and, and stuff. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, there's a back and forth when you're within a team and yeah, and everybody some people want to have a vision, some people want to just be part of the team. So it's like, you know, and but if you have multiple people that have visions, then it's like, you know, which vision are we doing or are we compromising on our vision our visions and making them a vision I know what you mean man I know what you mean so alright so yeah if we start chasing we're going to go into mode 2 and do a timer 4 to 8 so basically all the if mode zeros need to become Oh, actually, select needs to, can stay that way. Flee if mode two. Oh, we're gonna change the way flee even works. But here, like this stuff, this if mode zero needs to become select if mode zero or if mode two. Oh man, I'm just doing this mindlessly. I need to pay attention. <laughs> Whoops. Right, so his melee, okay, his regular melee, aha. Yeah, that needs to definitely initiate whether you're mode zero or two. He should be able to pathfind, yeah. Melee done's only if mode one, hurting. Could be mode two. Stop. Yeah. Okay, chase is if mode chase is if mode zero. Oh, you can keep chasing if you're in mode two, but you only set a timer. So you can update your target. I think update target should be still in mode zero only. Stop path. Now that could be both. Follow path as well. 
There we go. Okay. That should be good. Now we just want um, to do this thing above all else is to select if you're it well actually let's just make it hold on let's make a copy of this it was kind of working this is now flee where you only flee if you're in mode two doesn't matter if rand if the timer if we're in mode two and the timer has gone down to zero that's when he flees so the whole point of that was to try and get the Viper to start chasing and have a certain time limit that he will chase for. And as soon as he's done with that time limit, he's flees. So it makes him sort of feel more, a little more consistent. That was kind of complicated. Really did complicate the AI there to do that. But I think this is the right way to do that. The other way, I guess I could have lowered the rand until it was just more right, but it just didn't I feel like the rand was working very well. The rand, of course, doesn't work as consistently. chasing the whole time. He's in mode 2. He's got delays. Okay. So somehow the sequence flee is not triggering anymore. Oh, I guess maybe the timer never ran out. It keeps on showing me the delays, not the timers, because it's... Okay, let's recompile the AI system real quick. Real quick. This is going to take about 73 seconds at least. Um... Yeah, the... Debug, no, the set label. Oh, it's not even getting set. Okay, I gotta pay attention to this guy in slow mo then. Initial unsheath, good. Mode 11. Chase mode 2, no timer. Why is it not? T oh, there, there, that timer of 7 seconds all of a sudden. Alright, so something's wrong here.
I guess the only thing that would that would be happening here is that it would set the timer and then somehow set the timer to zero. Which happens initially. And then when he melees. Oh, it's probably because he melees every time. So how about we only set a timer if the existing timer is already up. How to do this? Oh, I guess. Um, you can just not do his newly done thing. It's... So if we're in mode zero, we do this. And if we're in mode two, then we maybe just do a little more delay. Like total of 0 0.15, 0 0.25, that would be three, four. So like the combined delays of what that would be if it were in mode one. And he just kind of like continues the chase that way instead of resetting his timer. Let's see if that works. That was tricky thinking. Tricky thinking. It was a thorny thicket of thought. Yes. I just said that.
keeps getting reset. Still. Yeah, and see, nothing else is setting the mode, so I guess it must be that. Yeah, TM game, game dev it is. Uh, so what that represents, because that says 0.8 to 0.1, that means that the lower bound, it's actually that 0.8 to, point is, uh, to 0.1 is based on intelligence. So if, um, if the entity is at maximum intelligence, it actually does less of a timer, right? So if at maximum intelligence, it only does a 0.1 timer, and at minimum intelligence, it does 0.8. So it does make sense. It's just sort of like bowling, where you have a better score is... No, I mean golf, where a better score is less strokes, you know what I mean? What's up, Kyle? Hello. This is my own uh, script, though, scripting language for doing AI for Songbringer, though, so I could make that however the hell I wanted. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's what it means. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, so I guess I gotta try it again, and this time pay attention really closely to when it's losing its mode, it's losing its timer. In fact, I got, you know, it'll really help is if I just recompile the AI system so it always shows the timer. Howdy! What's up, man? Yeah. I have not streamed in quite some number of days. Yes, I am using Cocos 2DX. Um, on top of Cocos 2DX, there's been a lot of stuff built, particularly for Songbringer, like an entity component system. And in total, Songbringer is about a hundred, over a hundred thousand lines of code. In fact, what is it up to these days? It's been a minute since I've done this. Um, can you see it? I think it's this. 116,000 lines! Damn! That's just in Songbringer's code. Um, and then, I think, how many git commits have I done? 8,315 git commits. Whew. Yeah, this is a 100k code base at this point. Um, but uh, let me show you the files too. So it's mostly like entity component system stuff, you know? All the sys, every type of component, like some, well, not every type of component, but a lot of the components have systems, there's entities, there's tons of, lots of code, but most, I think most of it, most of the files, anyways, are entity component system stuff, some classes, some core stuff, system y things. Hit things. Is there? 
Some of these files are way too large, though. They should be broken into more files. Like area patterns is a huge one. In fact, what was it? Oh, here's the, the breakdown. Yeah, Flux is the worst. Flux is a 9,000 line source file that is hell to compile. Even when my computer is not all bogged down by a game show, eating 200% of the CPU, Flux will still take at least eight seconds to compile. It's one source file that takes eight seconds to compile on a good day. And then these two as well, area and area patterns. Those are just so big. I would, I would really prefer, I'm thinking about switching to C for the next game. Because I'm tired of these slow compilations. What the? Okay, got to pay attention to his, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to change the AI system. Just make this way more explicit. So I'm just going to show the timer. Always. And there goes a minute and a half. Man, I'm starting to get hungry. It's almost dinner time. Yes. Yes. I love dinner time. I love dinner time. I love getting food stuffed into my face. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how I would do that. I, yeah, I'd probably start with just using Coco Studio X. What, ideally, what I'd like to do is create a framework layer, sort of, that abstracted which engine I was using. So I could use either Coco's 2D X or I could use SDL, for example, and just kind of have my own little layer of code that just wraps wraps what a game engine I'm using. So I just kind of like create my own layer that has all of the features and functionality that I use. And so I can kind of abstract which engine I'm using. And then hopefully that would make, make compilation a lot easier. Like I could basically take, if I wanted to recompile that, I could, I could like pre-compile that, I mean, into a library, which would, I think, really speed up compilation because Cocos 2D X has to include so many header files. So every single one of my CPP files includes just so many header files that it doesn't need. And it I'm pretty sure it has, I know it has to I know there's a pre-compiled recompiled header in every kind of like system, but still it slows you down. It slows you down when you have tons and tons of header files that you're really not you don't need that much stuff. You don't need to process that much stuff, pre-process all that. It has to be done for every single source file. It's like, what? I think that would significantly improve the compilation rate. If I just simplified the AI API that I'm using down to its core elements. We're running at five frames a second right now. Okay, I'm supposed to pay attention. What? What the... Input stuck. I think it. Oh my god. Input feels like it's. This has never happened before. What the heck? Try that again. Yes. FPS. RIP. It's like... 
Oh, it was stuck at 18x speed there for a second. Dude, some trippy things are happening right now. I don't know what is going on. All of a sudden, we're running at 20 frames a second. Don't get it. Oh, he keeps fleeing. There we go. Flee, flee, flee. Oh, he, of course, needs to set a timer after he flees. Or, oh, he just needs to go back to mode zero. That's it. Okay, that my computer just experienced the weirdest hiccup. I don't know what happened there. All of a sudden, it was running at four frames a second, and input was stuck down, and AI was going crazy. Is the time okay? I see what's happening. He is setting a timer, but it's so long because every time he pauses or delays, like it takes that much. Yeah, there he fleed once. Okay, I see what's going on. So this this timer needs to be really short after he goes into his chase mode, mode two. This timer needs to be like one to two seconds, super short. And then you should like, I guess you should delay for that long. Man, I sure got stuck on this guy. The first, the dragon fire was so quick. And this guy just got stuck on perfecting him endlessly. Because I made this kind of complicated to try and make this AI still feel how he did, but have be able to chase and flee. There he's fleeing. Now he's back straight into the chase. I guess he should go into mode 3 when he's fleeing. And he should do an actual timer here of like 4 to 8. No. I don't know. Mode 3, timer 0, then go back into mode 0. There, so he should go flee and then wait a while. Maybe he stops.
idea is not working that well because of... Uh, because of all these like pauses he does where he does delay but no timer. I gotta give this guy a break. Give myself a break, actually. Get a dinner break. Think about what to do with this guy. He's still chasing, still chasing too much. I wanted to make, I want to limit his chase, control his chase, but all that coding right there didn't really help. Maybe it helped a little, but not enough. Uh, it is. Interpreted once at runtime, so it basically it precompiles, sort of, yeah, it precompiles basically to its own like interpreted little byte codes. I guess you could call them. I guess it is a byte code. It's like a. I'll show you the structure. It's an AI component. It all goes down into these vowels. So a vowel can be null or an int or a float or a string. Oh, sorry, behaviors. What is going on? My input got stuck down in terminal just then. Dude, something, this is just weird. This 200% CPU thing is going crazy. This is the structure right here, behavior though. This is the important one. So every behavior is a is a recursive structure, I guess. So behavior has a vector of behavior of behavior children. So it parses it all once, and every behavior has a a value a val for its type. So even its type can be an integer, float, or string, um, and then a, a vector of values as well for the values in that particular behavior line. So I don't know. This is this is what the the whole AI is based on these two structures right here. Yeah, basically the string parsing is all done once. It, yeah, once it's done parsing, it sets its parse flag, and it's got all its values and behaviors ready to roll as as basically bytecodes because they're integers that represent certain AI uh, words and stuff like that, like. Whoa, did I even press that? <laughs> I gotta stop streaming here. This is going crazy. The game show is just this software that like, I tried to get them to fix it. I've reported these bugs, but they refuse to help me because they're like, oh, your computer doesn't meet our minimum requirements anymore. Uh, like uh, all these words, these are the things that get parsed, right? Some of the things get parsed, like sequence. That's an that's a word. That's like a bytecode. If that's a bytecode, mode is a bytecode. But some things, like the word, this phrase, "leave fire." This is just a string, you know. So, like, if anything doesn't, if it doesn't know a certain word, it just puts it as string data. Like this line right here has a bytecode representing the words, the the spawn. And then a string representing the value fire smart. Yeah. So, anyways, um, that's gonna be it for today's stream. It's dinner time and time to give this CPU a rest. By that I mean my laptop's CPU. Um, so thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate you all. Appreciate all your support. Um, and yeah, I don't know, how, like I said, was saying earlier, my life is changing. As you can see, I'm getting packed up. My life's getting packed up. I don't know where I'll be over the next few months. So, live streams will probably be at a minimum, but YouTube videos I will can be consistent with. I'll be able to put out more YouTube videos than live streams over the coming months. 
Thank you. Bon appetit. I appreciate that, man. I'm going to have a nice dinner. So cheers, everybody. Thanks a lot. We'll see y'all later.